Hi, Will. Welcome to this uh, session on citizen science. So what we're going to do in this session is show some of the citizen science projects and portals that are out there that the participants can have a look at and even take part in. Sounds good, Karen. I look forward to that. Just, I mean, there's loads of stuff out there that people could take part in first off, so we couldn't possibly show it all yes. in, in this session. But what we will try to do is give, I guess we'll try to give people a flavour of what is out there um, nationally, and maybe we might touch on some local stuff as well. Yes. The big one that maybe we start off with, um, it's, it's a national project, it's often the news participants might have even heard of it, and it's one that we probably talk a lot about. So I think it's one that we should cover is the National Biodiversity Data Center. Yeah, they have lots of cool stuff. The first one, Karen, here is the uh, records portal. So records.biodiversityireland.ie, you can see up there on the top of the screen. When you go in here, it's as simple as someone, look, it's self-explanatory, click here to start recording. If I go in there, there's options options for what type of species I might want to put a record for. Might be birds, butterflies, dragonflies, and so on. And this morning now I saw a bird out in the garden. So I could put in my name as William. Email. record date, the county, so it could have been anywhere, but at the moment I'm stuck in County Galway. So here we go, and then put in a spatial reference if I don't know where that is, I can go and click on the map. So I can go in here to this map and try and find where the place is. And it is, this bird, hang on, where the hell am I? Yeah. So this morning, when I had to go for a trip to the shop, get some milk, I noticed that there out here, that there was curlew. So in the inf additional information, this is one thing we encourage people to put in wild work, and we'll tell you why in a minute. And then the species name, it was a curlew. So it comes up the options. This is the one. There's the Latin name as well. It's activity. I just, let me see now. I, I just saw it, so. I think you can just. Please, yeah, just leave that one. Leave that one. So the abundance, one, from common to townland. This is required nearest letter frac. Uh, save record. Good news, all species were successfully recorded. Where these records go in the first place is they go into the, in the same website that we're in now, they actually, the records all show up on the main page in Ireland Citizen Science Portal. So Which I love, here, you can actually see your records and if you put a picture in you can see, everyone else can see that picture as well. It's a great way of, of sharing bits of what you've seen straight away with other people. And lots of people do this. Yeah, and I'm going to look up now and I'm going to try and find my record, see if it's in there at the moment. Um, we reset that. Birds in County Galway, Lapwing, Grey Heron, Mallard, Curlew, the seven Curlew records. Here they are. And there she is. Well, hmm. Wasn't sure now if it was a male or female curly, but we'll call it a female one for now. But that's not a field that matters for purpose of this. There you have the curly record that I just submitted. So when people put these records in live, they go into this portal, but then they do need to be double checked by someone who knows their birds or their plants if it was a plant's record. And it'll go into the main mapping system then. Um, but, I mean, I knew it was a curlew, I'm, I'm familiar with curlews, but what we would say is to do your very, very best to make sure that it is the correct species. And if you're unsure what it is, 
you really don't know, then don't put in the record. And if you that's can take a photo, that really helps with validation because then they can check your photo and then that's easy enough for them to go, yep, absolutely, you are right, that's a curlew. We're going to put that into our mapping now. Yeah, that's it. And you can also contact Wildwork, info at wildwork.ie. If you saw something, you don't know what it is, get in touch. Or there's lots of Facebook groups out there that there's bird watching, uh, bird watch Ireland branches have Facebook pages and you could log on there and ask someone a question, what kind of a bird is this? And very quickly people will tell you. So there's lots of ways to find out what the species is from help you can get from others or of course from books or online guides or whatever else. So the key thing is do try and make sure you know what it is before you put it in the record. But yeah. you'd be surprised. Uh, there are loads of things. People think that they may not know what these species are. It's just loads of things that we all know. So you can put in records for stuff like a robin. Most people know what a robin looked like or a magpie. Very well known, easy to identify bird or uh, a common daisy. You can put in records for all kinds of things that you already know. And what this does is it builds a picture of biodiversity in the area that you are putting in these records for. So we mentioned earlier, Karen, that it, if you put the tag wild work in when you submit the record, whether you put whether you submit the record on the online system that we're on now, or you can also use the biodiversity data center app, if you put in wild work in the additional information field, this is what happens. So we have our own citizen science portal, which we set up together with the data center, the National Biodiversity Data Center helped us to set this up. This is essentially their system, but there's a, a version of it on WildWorks website. And all the records on here on this page are records of things that were put in by people that were involved in WildWork activity. Now we've lots of birds in there at the moment, but that's because we had some big bird watching themed events. But if we look here in this system and we can go in here and zoom in, what we will see, ordinarily I'm in Cork, but at the moment I'm uh, working from home in Galway, you can see, might look familiar, Karen, does it? It does. There ah, it there, is. There she is. There's my curlew. And this really helps us to put wild work activity on the map. And what I mean by that more than anything is that if there's a local community, whether it's Yall or Baltimore or Douglas or anywhere, it doesn't have to be Cork, a local community anywhere. And if they utilize our system, if they're engaged with wild work and they put the records of what they see on the map, it's a wonderful way to showcase nature in your area and raise awareness of what's there. So you see here now we have a heat map and it's, it's starting to represent the areas in terms of wild work that are most active. Yeah. So record. you can see a, a little one over at Yall. A lot of bird work was done there. Middleton has got a nice. Yeah. That's where our offices are located. So often if, if we're on a walk during lunch or something, we might just spot something and, and pop it in there. That's why Middleton is getting a nice heat map blob over it. Exactly. And all these records are in the national system as well, as you saw earlier. So here we have maps.biodiversityireland.ie as opposed to records.biodiversityireland.ie. So this is the system with all the validated biodiversity records for Ireland. And not every single record that's ever been taken in the whole country is in here. I would say there's over 75% of all records for the country are inside in this system. So you see the amount of them there, there are 4 million records and counting. Number of different species, 16,000. Doesn't that sound impressive? That's fantastic. So there's six, that's different species in this yep. country have been observed. And then they have the, their system broken into, there's different ways of looking at it. You can look at protected species, threatened species, invasive species, birds, higher plants, so on. You go to the system, you can also just look for species. So Karen, you're interested to know about woodpecker, right? Yeah, the woodpecker is starting to come back into Ireland. So I would love to see if it's 
near Cork yet or where it started um, to be spotted to? Definitely some in Cork. Yeah, and they're moving, they're, they're right over to the western seaboard now. So they came across from the UK, right? Yeah. Um, and that's evident from this map here of where they've been observed. But how many records are there now of them? 338. And they're in 133 different uh, 10k squares. So they're spreading. And what we could do then, if, if we wanted to go and see the live map for those, we can, that gives a close up of the picture so you can kind of see where they are. But what you can actually do is you click on the live map. Now I can see where they are. This is one of the closest ones to Cork Harbour. Can we go there? Or do you fancy going to West Cork? Yeah, West Cork. List Levan. It's from the Birds of Ireland data set. Dr. Brian Reedy submitted the record. And it was in 2016. 2016. See, I, I didn't even realise that they had come as far as Cork that long ago. Yeah. So I really need to be looking out for them. And I wonder, did Brian submit these other records? Yeah. Tim no, Cook? it was different. We'll see who submitted this one. Cape Clear. A different data set again, Rare Birds of Ireland. 2008. Very interesting. And there isn't a name on the recorder there. But that, so that record probably just came straight from the data set and they may not have had the recorder's name in that data set. So all this data we're talking about, someone, somewhere, at some time, was out in the field and saw a woodpecker and recorded it. it. Might have been part of their job or some research project they were involved in, or they were just a volunteer bird watcher. But the data that they gathered has ended up in this online system that can be shared with everyone in Ireland and in fact shared with everyone around the world. So even if there is a research project on the spread of the great spotted woodpecker throughout Europe, this data now becomes very valuable, but there's loads of things you can do with the data. Like you can generate reports uh, for a particular area, for a particular species. It's just, you can do so much with it, whatever you might need it for, basically it, it can be put to you. So this website is called pollinators.ie. And it is very much associated with the National Biodiversity Data Center as well. And this is all to do really with the All Ireland Pollinator Plan. And in here, you're able to record pollinators and you're able to record actions as well. If you sow the wildflower meadow somewhere, for instance, you can record that stuff in here. And you see down here, they have solitary bee monitoring scheme, bumblebee monitoring scheme, flower insect time counts. So they've all these special purpose monitoring schemes that volunteers can get involved with. Uh, can get involved with. Some of them you might need to be trained up and there's often training courses then provided for that purpose. But one that we've been involved in is um, the national schemes for bumblebee and butterfly monitoring. They're very popular. So just to give you a sense on the bumblebees, that what that takes is you need to learn to be able to identify Ireland's bumblebees, which can be pretty quick. You can learn a lot of it in a day or so. And then you need to set out a walk that you do on a monthly basis for eight months in the year. And the walk is one to two kilometers in length. And when you're doing it, you just jot down the different bumblebees you've seen, and then you submit them into their, their recording scheme online. And then that way they have around 200 people doing that throughout the country each year. They're able to get more accurate data and they can actually tell stuff to do with how Ireland's bumblebees are doing and also how Ireland's landscape may be changing. Because bumblebees are a great indicator of general landscape health. So if you monitor the bumblebee populations, it can tell you quite a lot about how biodiversity is doing in a wider sense. And you can also monitor other trends to do with stuff like climate change or whatever else. So they have a whole page dedicated to the bumblebee monitoring scheme. You, there is so much information in here from how to get involved, information about the bumblebees, ID, guides, news, Here's something that people might like to actually 
do. You can do it anytime you want. They have an online course on there on how to identify Ireland's bumblebees. There's a lot of people and they don't realize the, the difference that they actually don't realize there's a such thing as a bumblebee and a honeybee and that they're different from each other, let alone that we have different types of bumblebees. So you can find out about all those in here. So reams of information there to get stuck into for anyone who's interested in getting involved in monitoring Ireland's poll pollinators and helping conservation in a great way if they do so. So Birdwatch Ireland is one of the oldest conservation charities in Ireland. And as you might have guessed, lots of what they do is got to do with birds, but they're involved in all kinds of things to do with biodiversity, it's not just birds. Uh, they tie in with loads of other types of projects, but they have loads of um, ongoing research projects that, they're, that they do. And there's a really nice one that anyone can get involved in really called the Irish Garden Bird Survey. And it's easy to find it if you go onto the Birdwatch Ireland website. And really what that is about is every winter, you just keep tabs of what birds are visiting your garden and you submit those records into Birdwatch Ireland system. And over time, Birdwatch Ireland are able to track how the populations of garden birds in Ireland are doing. And they've been running that survey for many years now. So it's a really lovely one for people to get involved in. I know it's something that people often do with their kids. And so it's a, one of the, I think it's one of the most suitable citizen science uh, surveys for families to get involved in. Absolutely. I do it from my kitchen while I'm sitting down eating breakfast and I can count my birds just like that. So here you have an outcome from that garden bird survey. This is the 2018-19 results. They produce a nice little booklet that can be shared with people. So we see if there's any pictures. So there was fluctuations with finches and this bit, the Ireland's top 30 garden birds in the winter of 1819. So the most recorded species was robin. It occurred in 99.6% of gardens and there was no change from the previous year. And the average of robins in gardens over five years was 99.8% of gardens over five years on average have robins. Whereas then you've something like pheasants, they're down there in the bottom of that list, number 30. And they're only, only observed in 15.4% of gardens. I love this list because definitely the, the, the top 10, I would say, are the most common in my garden as well. But it's always nice if I get something like I have pied wagtail in the garden and that's only 52% of gardens. So that's good. So, you know, I have one that isn't so common. Yeah. And sparrowhawk, a bird of prey that I, I think lots of people, well, they've probably seen it, but not realised they've seen one. So sparrowhawk were in 31% of gardens. That to me seems a lot. Um, but I guess what might happen is when you start looking out for birds, that's when you're going that's to it. spot the sparrowhawk. So I, I'm only guessing here, and, and could we ever really know for sure? I don't know. But my guess is that a lot of those sparrowhawk sightings, people may have been seeing a sparrowhawk for the first time because they got into the survey, learned about birds, started taking notice of stuff and really realizing what is around them. So Karen, that was very much a whistle stop tour through citizen science in Ireland, locally in Cork, Galway. So if we could ask people to do one thing, uh, is it would be lovely if people would engage with our own citizen science portal. In doing so, you're actually submitting records into the National Biodiversity Data System anyway, so everyone can benefit. It's really easy, you just head to our website and find the Citizen Science Portal, and there's instructions on there for how to do it. And you can also use your phone. If you're stuck with any records, uh, as in you're not sure what the species might be, we would love to hear from people. You can send an email directly to info at wildwork or get in touch with us on Facebook and Twitter. And if we can help you, we can direct you towards a whole host of other people who can. So we hope you really liked uh, myself and Karen's video today on citizen science. We hope that it encourage you, encourages you to get involved in citizen science. And that if you do get involved in citizen science, that you get a whole lot out of it. We know that nature will benefit from you doing so. 
but really I think there's a lot of great things that happen for you as a person if you yourself become a citizen scientist. Thanks for that, Will. Yeah, you, as you said, it was a whistle-stop tour, but we've covered a huge amount for people to go and explore. But I think the main thing is maybe just start getting out there and start looking at what's around you. Don't worry about what you don't know. You're going to learn so much, and I think you're going to have a lot of fun doing it. So we will say goodbye for now, and we hope to see you in our next video. Bye-bye. See you, Will.